Welcome to my Cisco Scaling Network's last chapter review. This is chapter 9, iOS Imaging and Licensing. This is the last chapter for this curriculum. So, with that said, we're going to talk about managing iOS system files and licensing. So, we're going to basically we're going to talk about licensing, understand the licensing, making sure we understand the naming convention, how it works, how to upgrade, how to manage them, how to install them. Let's make sure that we're doing all of this legally. That's a big thing because I've actually installed several Cisco routers for organizations where licensing on the Cisco router was not understood at all. So it was, well, why do we have to pay for this? What features do we want? Why do we have to pay for those features? Why can't we just copy it from this router to that router? So, yeah, licensing is extremely important. So we're going to be, again, talking about the licensing portfolio, talking about the packaging, the naming convention. So Cisco iOS software release families and trains. For example, the family releases 12, 12, 13, 12, 4, 15, 15, 1, 15, dot, the additional numbers. Uh, the train version is a version for releasing uh, bug fixes or specifically new features. Here we go is we have the we see that here was a bug fix, and then we, addition, we entered a new features. So here's the main line train with bug fixes, and then here is the new one with new features and additional bug fixes. Because you have to remember, Cisco iOS is a operating system. As they find holes, as they find bugs, or as they find new ways to implement things, they fix them. So releases are designated as a maintenance de uh, deployment, an MD, and it's always associated with a technology train, or a T. So let's look at how the timeline works. So normally the main trail number, also the family number, the maintenance identifier, and then the rebuild. So that's for the main line train. If there are bug fixes or technical trains, again, same thing, the train number, the maintenance identifier, the train identifier, and then the rebuild identifier. So the maintenance identifier is normally in brackets, and then after the brackets will come the train identifier. Alright, so with that said, let's talk about the system imaging packaging. Normally, comes in a few different flavors. You get the base image, the IP base. If you want additional features, you buy the appropriate iOS. Here we have IP voice. Where is my pin? You add voice functionality. That adds VoIP and VSFR. If you want additional features, you have advanced security, advanced service provider, and an enterprise base. This adds layer 3 routing protocols, Apple Talk, IPX, IBM. The SP service adds things like SSL, SSH, MPLS, ATM. The advanced security adds things like firewalls, IDSs, IPSs, IPSec, 3DAS, and VPNs. All of them lead to, so this is this is like tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, tier 4. You have to get a tier 2 license to be able to get a tier 3 license. That allows you to get the appropriate additional features like uh, merged advanced security and uh, SP services. This is going to be more of a, an advanced version of that and that includes IPv6. The enterprise services are going to be a, a merged enterprise base with service provide. And then the fourth tier is going to be everything. You pay for the services that you need. 
So keep that in mind. And this is according to the Relief 15 iOS. We have the extended maintenance releases. We have the standard maintenance releases. M versus T. You're going to notice that after the brackets. The extended maintenance is an ideal for a long-term maintenance which enables customers to qualify, deploy, and remain in the release for a large period of time. The standard maintenance is a release that's used for more of a shorter window. Honestly, I've had both of them last just as long. You pay for the features that you want, and as you need more features, you upgrade as appropriate. Here's the 15 system imaging packaging, IP base, and then it turns into three uh, other packages, security, unified connection, and data, depending on what you need. This is going to be on the 19, 29, 39 series devices. If you want firewall features, you get the security. If you want voice or a voice gateway, you get that. If you want data, you get the data license. Here's the packaging again. IP base, voice, enterprise base. So again, as you need things, you get the appropriate ones. This is just trying to kind of simplify between 12 and 15, the different licensing families. Here's how you see your licensing. If you do a show flash, it should show you what licensing you have. Here we have a universal K9 MZ SPA 1524M3. Hardware, feature set, memory location, compressed formats, major release, minor release, feature extended maintenance, file extension. Universal is going to be that base K9, or that base image. How do we get it to and from? You can always copy them from and to a TFTP server. Or you can just copy the flash. How do you create a, a memory backup? Again, you can always upload it via TFTP to a TFTP server. So where do you get the iOS? You normally get them from Cisco. Uh, you can get them from third-party sellers, but again, you're normally going to want a certificate of the licensing that you have. Understand the boot sequence and the boot system. Oh, it doesn't want to change slides there. There we go. You can have boot-specific flashes, because you could actually have more than one flash. So you can boot the system. You can boot it in before it loads the flash, so you can actually do basic ROM commands, and you can back it up there as well. Licensing overview, each device ships the same universal image, the same base license. You can see your licensing by show license. Again, here's the licensing. You get IP base, that comes with the device. If you want more, you get the appropriate license. If you buy a router and it has more a, of an advanced feature set, if you don't have the licensing documentation, you don't have the right license. You cannot use the license features unless you have the documentation. A router is shipped pre-installed with the software image and corresponds permanent licensing for the customer specific package and feature. It can also come with an evaluation license, and that's more of a temporary license. How do you get the licensing? You purchase a package or feature, you obtain the license, you install the license. You can get the licensing through a Cisco License Manager or a Cisco License Portal. Basically, you get them from Cisco. First step is to purchase it. You get the IP based license, you get all of the different feature sets that you need, and you plug them in. How you obtain them is again through Cisco. How do you install the license? You go to the privilege exec mode, 
You reload the router using the reload going into the exec mode. After a permanent license is installed on the router, it's a good for the particular feature set for the life of the router, even across iOS versions. That's a big thing. You buy the security feature, and if you go to a different family, you still have that feature on the newer iOS devices, or on the newer devices using different iOS version numbers. But again, within your company, Unified communication is not supported in, in the 1941 routers. That's more of just an FYI. Show license, show version, shows you the different types of licensing that you have. Show version will show you the specific license that you have and if they're permanent or if they're temporary. Show license will show you the feature sets that you have. Activating an evaluation. You have to accept the license agreement. You have to turn on the boot module for them, and that will allow you to do it. Backing up your license, you can save it to Flash to a LIC license file. You can always uninstall the licensing and reload the router. And that's this chapter in a nutshell. Make sure that you understand the licensing basically for this I've had to know two major things. How to read the license family trains, and how to install the license, and how to verify the license. That's it. Basically, you're doing this so that you don't have to worry about copyright infringement of the software. Go through some of the boot commands. Again, show license, so versions are the big ones. And that's the end of this chapter. If you need any material, or if you need any help, please let me know. Thank you.